Hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome back to Tower 2. But before that, I got a quick thank you. You guys actually are amazing, and I hit 2K subscribers. So for that, I am very, very grateful. I'll try my best to keep the content pumping. And yet again, thank you very much for 2K subscribers. I really do appreciate the support and love. It goes a long way. Okay, let's get into it. Last week, I did use my angel team on basically the wrong tower which was tower three and i ended up like having to two team that tower just because my liz died too early and the reset for it was at like i think stage three or four i think i'm not entirely sure but it's somewhere down there so it was like too it was too far for me to keep resetting it if my liz would die on a 50 50 coin flip crit so this one's easier as tier is in the second team so it's easy to reset for me because it's still a coin flip but for me it's not that much of a reset as the first team i can blow through the first team in like a few minutes so i don't mind resetting and i did reset quite a bit of times while doing this as well because tier would crit my liz let's say three four times in a row before i can actually get him to not crit so we live so i can continue my run perfectly so that's something that does happen with this team but this first time i blow through this pretty fast and I did end up having to kill the team quite a few times. And to me, it didn't feel like it made much of a difference if I killed Scotty first or Deanne first. Because I tried killing both. And for most part, I did come off full HP at the end of just killing off this first team. So I am able to survive this very easy and move on to the second team. And that's where like the RNG really comes into play, whether you get great or not. Kill one unit, chip down someone else, hopefully get a kill now and again, and make sure and full heal before you go through, because trust me, you might end up needing every single percentage of your HP. Because there would be times when Liz would not get crit on, but Sariel would get demolished to maybe 1% HP, and it would be too close, and maybe Sariel dies like in the turn after, because I can't fully heal him. So yeah, things like that could happen. So try your best to like get full HP before moving on. Like you can take your time and do this. Don't be rushing. You have the sustainability to be tanky and just live through a lot of DPS on this team. So you don't need to be rushing for like kills. Then the alts they, they're going to have is going to be restricted by two turns basically. So you have a decent amount of time to actually push with this team. Also, a big shout out to the boys who was who was always in like stream chat with me, just hanging and chilling and just being my backup for when I need it for when I'm doing these runs. So yeah, shout out to the live stream crew, bro. I appreciate y'all a lot, man. So huge big ups on that front. This is one of the clips I just added it in to show you. This is what happens. Boom. Easy. Liz is dead. Sariel's one shot. Yeah, both of them got crit in this instance. But for some parts, Sariel could not get crit on. And Liz could just die. And some parts, Liz would live. And then Sariel's 1 HP. So this was the perfect run I got here where he didn't crit anyone. So that's amazing. Tarmiel does go down to 1% HP for every time though. He is actually like a god like surviving how one hp consistently there's two plays i can normally do here is either i buff i sorry aoe into miles aoe or i buff sorry aoe into a heal and for the most part i i'm i ended up leaning more towards the heal because there are sometimes tar is getting pretty low and i don't like the feeling of him if he can like randomly die to something so i i ended up just pushing heals and uh, the next step is basically just to kill off nanashi once you get rid of him like the team becomes significantly more weaker so it's way more easier to get past it and keep in mind tier can still be a nuisance here he can still maybe pull level 2 aoe and just go straight into you and there's still a huge chance that he crits you so yeah things like that can happen and it did happen to me so 
That's why I try my best to really keep him under control while doing this because it's not a nice time having to constantly reset on this. Even though it's like the second team in the tower, it's still not a nice thing to constantly be resetting. Even though it's like way, way easier now. And I really do appreciate that. It is immensely easier with just re being able to reset a singular tower. So yeah, I'm very grateful for that as well. So right now, I'm basically just you know, whittling down the team, picking between who I should kill here. It's like, I'm thinking I just get rid of her. So it's just one less turn for me to like worry about. And it's an easy kill. We don't need to take any extra damage. Not that she can really do much to this team with her ult. But it's like, we get an easy kill. And next turn, maybe we pull decent cards to like kill off Freya. And we actually do pull decent cards, which are more than enough to just get rid of him. Get rid of perfect HP, so this is a very nice clear. That's probably where most of the pain is going to be, is this team. So once you get that down, the tower is basically gone. The Pierce stage is like not that much of a worry. So for this team, the main focus is Escanor because as always, Escanor, yeah, he is a nuisance, my guy. So what we're going to be doing here is healing and trying to just get rid of him off rip. Hopefully he doesn't like pull random level two merges off anything because you know that shit can happen as in anything. And that did happen for me quite a bit on the last set of hero arena like that escanor was a pain yo like he would constantly be level 2 aoeing out of nowhere So yeah, luckily we do not get unfortunate RNG. Pretty decent. We have two AoE, so we do stack Sariel while getting rid of Escanor here. So that is pretty nice. This alone literally cements where we're at in this entire thing. Just killing off Escanor makes it like so much easier to get this final clear. At this point, you just kill Melee and it's GG's. You can relax all you want, full heal, because Ludo and Lilia can't really do anything by themselves. Just like that, Lilia actually goes down pretty, pretty freaking easy. The Liz attack here, I'm actually very happy that did not one shot. Even though I'm missing like maybe 2-3% of my top HP, I'm actually grateful that I actually got to use my ult and full perfectly up. Because in these, in, on these runs, you never know what can happen and like a sliver of HP can cost you a to an entire tower run. So that's why I tend to like, if I can savor it for like a healing, I would take it. Angels v Angels. This team is probably one that I was... I'm not really sure how should I play against this team. If Ludo is constantly going to be spamming out his shield, it would be very annoying. And it really cocks your damage. So that's one thing I was really, really worried about while doing this. 
because you can't really play the way you would normally play So yeah, I'm going to be pushing my Lizards out to try to keep baiting Tarmiel to using his ult removals. It's basically what it's going to do is change up how he, how the AI decides to play. Because if you have an ult, they're going to obviously go for a Tarmiel removal if they have it. So that's a nice way to like reduce the damage that you're going to get incoming. Right here, I do get the, a decent bit of RNG on my side because I did pull a Miles single target and that allows me to actually get Miles ultimate and kill Tarmiel, which is actually pretty good here. So he can't remove my ult anymore and they're one unit down. I think if I had a heal here, I probably would just continue because that's the only thing. Like, I just needed my HP to be topped up right here because I'm missing, what, like 10%, maybe 10% HP there. And I would actually like to have that HP before moving on as always. So, yeah, I'm actually going to stall out and see if I can get it. Because I don't want to be moving forward. And next thing you know, half my team is wiped off turn one triple AoE play. So, yeah, we don't want that. So, I want, like, way, way better HP. I'm able to actually push all my ults here, right? Then come to see my 1-6 mile is not enough to to finish off Liz it's a bit unfortunate but she is disabled so we're not gonna get wiped thankfully because <laughs> I'm pretty sure we would die to that if she was like not disabled it's very very fortunate on that turn one of the main reasons why i needed to come in here full hp is because of this team the dps on this team's turn one is insane like they do so much damage it's not even funny they chunk my units like it's nothing like look at liz's hp she and yeah she's just dead that's all you need to worry about because if my Tarmiel and my Sariel died there, we can't really do anything. So having them survive allows me to actually kill Roxy and that's it. It's pretty much GG's at this point because once you kill Roxy, you can just use Mile alone and you would be able to clear this team. So at this point, it's not really, it doesn't really matter as much if your Sariel or Tarmiel dies off. But it is pretty nice to have them survive the, the, the turn one onslaught. Also, do not focus Meliodas. Just leave Meli alive as long as you can. If he dies in the process of you just killing other units, it is what it is. But try to keep him alive as much as you can because he's a unit that isn't really going to do much damage. And he's probably going to use his cards. I did end up one teaming this entire tower. So yeah, that is amazing. That being said, guys, as always, I appreciate you all for watching. Yet again, thank you for 2k subscribers and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And I'm still running from my demons I'm still hiding all my secrets And I just need someone I believe in Will you wait for me while I'm still healing You know Oh
So I'm